Greetings students! Let's have a quick recap of what we talked about today. I'm going to show you how you create variables, what data types are, how you assign values to variables, how you do mathematical calculations, and then how you display the results. This is a very simple program, but it's good to build up from here so that you can notice the patterns. The first line on line 5 there is how we declare a variable. Declaring a variable means that you're telling the computer that it needs to create a space in memory that can save some kind of information. In this case, that first word there, int, is the data type of the variable. It tells you what type of data we're going to be able to save into that variable. Num is the variable name. When you create other kinds of variables, it's going to follow the same pattern where the first word tells it what kind of information, and the second word is the name of the variable that's holding the information. Here are some more examples. <coughs> Double price, string name, int Waldo. In each of these cases, the first word is the type of information. Int means that the variable holds an integer. Double means that it will hold a number that could have decimals on it. String is the Java name for text, so any type of text you would save into a string variable. And int again was an integer. The variable names in this case are num, price, name, and Waldo. Again, this is called declaring a variable. Just because you've declared a variable doesn't mean you've actually saved anything into it yet. The way you do that is with the equals sign. Sometimes this is called the assignment operator. It works differently than in math. In math, uh, an equal sign means the two things on either side are the same. In Java, it means take whatever's on the right-hand side and save it inside whatever's on the left-hand side. So in math, you could say 5 equals num, and that would be the same thing as num equals 5. In Java, you couldn't take this and save it inside of 5, because 5 isn't the kind of thing that can save other things. It's just a number. It's not a variable. In the print statement here, if I print num and I run it, you'll see it displays the value of that variable. Here, if I say num equals num plus 1, when this program runs, first it will assign 5 to num. Then when it gets to this line, it will look at num. It will say that's the number 5. It will add 1 to that. So now this right-hand side is equal to 6. And then it will save that 6 back inside num. So that means that when we display it down here, it will display num. As you can see, if I try and save 5.5 into num, it underlines it in red. If I highlight it, it says type mismatch cannot convert from double to int. What it's trying to say here is the data type for num is an integer. I know that if I look where I first created up here, int num. I'm trying to save something that's not an integer into this variable that has to hold an integer. So that's not going to work. This shows another common mistake. Here I'm trying to save the name Waldo into my name variable. If I look where I create name, it's a string, which means it's going to hold text, so that looks OK. So why isn't it saving this text the way that it's supposed to? Without quotation marks, the computer will think that Waldo is a variable that you meant to create, but actually didn't. Um, actually, we do have a Waldo variable here. So it, it thinks that we're trying to save this Waldo variable, which is an integer, into the name variable. We actually want it to be the word Waldo. So the way that you specify text is by putting quotation marks. Anything between quotation marks is treated as text. You can use this in print statements. So I can say, hello, name, your number is num. <laughs> Notice that the text that occurs between the quotation marks highlights in blue, here and here. Whatever highlights in blue, the computer will display that text exactly. Name and num are variables, so the computer will look and see what's inside that variable and display whatever's saved in there. So this should say, hello, Waldo, your, name, your number is 5. And when I run it, that's exactly what happens. Hmm, but I don't have a space here. You might think, well, I can put some spaces in there, but if I run it, you'll see that the output's unchanged. That's because what displays in the console is only the text that appears inside the quotation marks. So I would need to add a space after the O before the quotation mark is over in order for that space to get displayed. Now when I run it, you see that the space is there. You might be wondering what these plus symbols are about. In math, you could have 
In math, I could say something like five plus six, and the plus symbol means add those numbers together. Well, hello is text, and name is also text. So how do you add text to text? What the plus symbol means when you have text on either side is it will just paste those two pieces of text together, end to end. The technical name for this is concatenating. So it's going to display hello, followed by name, followed by this text. If you accidentally leave a plus symbol out, it's going to complain because it won't know what that is. You might have been thinking, well, it's complaining already. Why does this name underline in red? The answer is we created the name variable up here, but I deleted the line of code that assigns a value. So I'll put it back in. Name equals Marl Babak. Try this as an exercise. Write your own program to do the following. Create a variable named color to store text. Save the text red into that variable. Create a variable named weight, which will store a number with decimals. Save the number 10.5 into that variable. Then use plus signs inside a print statement to display the name and the value for each of the variables. So your output might look like this. The color variable has the word red. The weight variable has the number 10.5. Pause the video right now, give it a try, and then I'll show you the solution. Here's the result. First, I create a color variable that can hold text. The data type is string. The variable name is color. Then I save the word red into that variable. I use quotes because it's text. Then I create a variable called weight, which can hold a number with decimals. So I use double as the data type and weight as the variable name. I store the number 10.5 into that variable. Then I have a print statement where I print the exact words that I want to see right up until it comes time to print what's inside the variable. So I'm printing the color, the color variable has the word, but then instead of actually typing the word red here, I'm going to display whatever word is inside that variable. It's still going to display red because I saved red into the variable. But if I typed green up here, it would use that value inside the print statement here. Then I continue with the text, the weight variable has the number. Here, the weight variable has the number. But then, instead of typing 10.5 in the print statement, I use the variable name, because I know this variable is saving the number that I'm interested in. That's it.